Let us assume that you want to start a new bicycle manufacturing plant in India and you're thrilled about it because you believe that it's going to be a cash cow. However, your rational mind instructs you to conduct a quick investment analysis to determine whether you will be able to recover your investments or not. And that is when the discounted payback period comes in handy. Along with other corporate finance tools such as the net present value and internal rate of return, you can utilize this discounted payback period to determine how quickly you will be able to recover your investments. Hi all, my name is Dheeraj Vaidya from wallstreetmojo.com and in today's video we will discuss all about discounted payback period, its calculations, how it is used in project evaluations and its limitations. So let's get started. So first thing first, before we even talk about this discounted payback period, you must be aware of what is a payback period, right? Because discounted payback period will get built upon what is a payback period. All right. So those who are pretty much new to this concept or, you know, kind of unclear of what payback period is all about, I would urge you to look at a comprehensive video tutorial, which we have created earlier. This covers, you know, its calculations, formulas, its limitations and whatnot. OK, so I would urge you to have a look at that first and then come to this discounted payback period. All right. So this video will start with an assumption that you know what is a payback period. All right. Okay, so let's take this example to understand what is a discounted payback period. Okay, let's assume that you have a project where you require some initial investments of let's say $1,200 in year zero. That's the initial investment. And this project yields $400 in year one, 500 in year two, 600 in year three and 700 in year four. Okay, so this is like a typical project. Okay, and no other expenses as such. All right. So how do we define first the payback period okay we define payback period as the time taken to recover your initial investment right so it's a time taken to recover your initial investment okay that is what is the payback period okay now what is the initial investment the initial investment is nothing but twelve hundred dollars and we would like to see how much time it takes to recover your initial investment so if you look at the example here in the first year you recover four hundred dollars another five hundred dollars in year two so you have recovered you know nine hundred dollars by the end of year two right but what about year three if you add this up again that would be $1,500. So you have recovered more than your $1,200. So ideally, your payback period should come between year two and year three, right? So uh, let's calculate this uh, uh, more in a methodological way. And then we will contrast it with discounted payback period. Okay. So the first thing that we will need here is an item called as a cumulative cash flows okay what is the meaning of cumulative cash flows so we'll take it from the cash inflows point of view that in the first year we recovered four hundred dollars all right what about the second year the cumulative would be initial first year cash flows of four hundred dollars and then another five hundred dollars all right so we have recovered nine hundred dollars by the end of year two and likewise we continue for year three and year four so overall this project yields a cumulative cash flow of twenty two hundred dollars all right now another thing that we need to know is the balance amount what do you mean by balance amount balance amount is nothing but how much is still left to recover from our initial investment so twelve hundred dollars was our initial investment and 400 is what we recovered so the balance amount will be 800 dollars right to be recovered correct so that's what i'm putting that in the formula 1200 dollars plus my 400 dollars as a recovery so the balance is 800 dollars is yet to be recovered likewise what is the balance after year two the balance is 300 dollars to be recovered yet because 900 dollars cumulatively we have recovered by the end of year two 300 is still left what about year three? Now this goes into the positive, right? 
because we have recovered more than the initial investment so uh, that is where our break even point actually lies so the way it is calculated is payback period we have this as the negative balances so this will be like two years plus something right so at the end of two years you are yet to recover this 300 dollars correct so this will be two years plus some number right and that fraction amount is to be calculated by using this balance amount here right now you are earning six hundred dollars in year three and what is to be recovered yet that is three hundred dollars right so what will be the amount of time you take to recover three hundred dollars that will be nothing but the fraction of three hundred dollars divided by six hundred dollars so that comes out to be zero point five okay so the overall payback period will be nothing but two plus your 0.5 that is 2.5 years okay so this is how you know payback period is calculated fairly simple now look at what we have done right now what's its biggest limitation the biggest limitation is it doesn't consider time value of money okay what do we mean by that it is basically assuming that $400 which we get after one year is same as $400 that we have it today is that true we know from time value of money concept that both have different value so if we have to invest $400 today it will have a far more value after year one and year two and so on and so forth because of inflation and interest rates right and in payback period there is a complete disregard of this concept so that is why what we do is we do a markup we say that instead of using cash flows let's use discounted cash flows okay so we are saying that okay let's assume that here there was 400 dollars let's take a discounted cash flow instead of cash flows and that would give us a better picture of how much is our payback period okay so what is the value of 400 dollars which we get after year one what its value today it will be the present value of 400 dollars right but in order to calculate the present value what else do you need you need the discount rate okay or the rate of return that you expect all right so let's assume that the rate of return that is expected is let's say 10 percent okay so what is the discounted cash flow okay instead of cash flows remember we are now going to use discounted cash flows what is the discounted cash flow here it will be four hundred dollars divided by your one plus ten percent okay so i'm trying to find the present value of four hundred dollars right and this is the amount of money that you're recovering in actuals because of time value of money concept okay so 363.3 and not 400 okay so let's look at year two so i'll copy this formula and paste it and instead of to the power of one i should have power of two because i'll get 500 dollars at the end of year two so i have to discount it twice right so this will come out to be 413 and what about year three to the power of three this will be 450.8 and 478.1 so here i'm doing nothing but i'm basically calculating the present value of these absolute cash flows now once i have all of these the approach to calculate the payback period remains exactly the same as we did earlier so i'll just copy and paste this here okay so instead of cumulative cash flows i will make it as cumulative discounted cash flows okay so cumulative cash flows on one side here it will be discounted cash flows cumulatively okay so let's do that cumulatively first year we recover 363.6 what about the second year 363.6 plus 413.2 and we continue to the very end so as you can see here the profile looks slightly different right so by the end of year three you assume that you have recovered fifteen hundred dollars but here in this case you have recovered how much one two two seven point eight now what's the balance amount let's calculate that too okay so initial investment is twelve hundred dollars and uh, 
we only recover 363.6 so the balance is 836.4 okay so i keep on doing it and uh, what we note is that again this number becomes positive between year two and year three so the discounted payback period comes out to be two years plus some fraction right now look at this we essentially are recovering 450 dollars in year three and we have to recover 423.1 out of that so how much time will it take obviously it will be a fraction of both right so 423.1 divided by 450.8 so uh, this will be how much 0 0.9 so let me just increase the fraction so this is 0 0.94 so the overall discounted payback period is 2.94 years okay so just contrast this with what we got earlier when we calculated the payback period it was 2.5 years now when we consider the discounted cash flows the discounted payback period comes out to be a bit higher and that is 2.94 years right and obviously it is accurate because this takes care of your time value of money right so this is how it's an upgrade over the payback period and addresses the limitation of just taking the absolute cash inflows uh, over the payback period i hope you found this video to be useful please do like and share and if you have any feedback or want to suggest a topic for any future videos then you may do so by writing about it in the comment section also we come up with interesting videos on finance and accounting topics regularly so if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, then please do so by clicking on the subscribe button so that you can get the notification as soon as we release the new video. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.